Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? Let me ask you a question. Do energy vampires actually exist? I mean, are there people who will steal your energy, rob you of your energy, take your energy away, diminish you in some way? Are there certain people that you deal with that like the moment you deal with them, you know, you're just like <laughs> sucks the energy out of you? Do people have auras? Uh, does it change colors? Is there some way that people are exchanging energy? I got a ton of questions in from the Spiritual Hooligan Tribe. We're going to put these things to the test and see what happens, and that is the Applied Kinesiology Test. We want to see, is this stuff strong or is it weak? My name is Matthew Ferry, and I am bringing you your daily enlightenment. It's your moment to pause, to slow down, and to connect with enlightened perspectives. I wanna help you to quiet your mind and restore your peace. So I took some notes here from a post that one of our wonderful spiritual hooligans put up, shout out. And uh, she said, I'm curious, Matthew and Kristen, that's my wife, Kristen, do, um, I'm curious about the, the, the aspect of, of energy. Could we muscle test it? There's a bit of discussion going on in the page. So here's what she said, and what I did was I took these and I had other people corroborate them. So the test that I'm doing, I did the muscle test myself, then I had other people test it to make sure that I wasn't testing in a bubble, to make sure that what I was testing was actually working and it wasn't just um, you know me noodling around uh, with, with my fingers, muscle testing strength and weakness, okay? So remember, strong and weak doesn't mean true or false. Strong and weak just means that it strengthens you and it weakens you. And over time, what I've discerned is the more you do that is strong, the quieter your mind gets because you're not in a survival state. When you're weak, you're in a survival state. Your body has to compensate in some way and mental chatter is a compensation. Okay, with that in the background, check it out. Let me read some of these things, all right? Uh, do we have chakras that tests strong? Do we have energy centers in our body that also test strong? And then the follow-up, can they be blocked? That also tests strong. So here's the thing to note. Because those things test strong doesn't mean that they're true. Currently, they live in a realm that is dogmatic, meaning we don't actually know if they're true. There's no scientific evidence if those things are true. Now, we're getting, we're getting close. We're, there's uh, science that is being done that's helping us to see uh, what the ancient seers have been intuiting for a long time. But right now, it lives in the realm of intuition. So for us, what we do is we say, okay, is that a strengthening thing for me to believe or is that a weakening thing? Will, that, will it weaken my body to think that? Because if it does, then my mind is going to start chatting. It's going to be a bummer, okay? Here's the other thing that, uh, that she put down, which is, can other people drain your energy that tests weak? Can other people change your energy that tests strong. So to think that another person can drain your energy actually weakens you. And to think that a person can um, change your energy, that strengthens you, but we're gonna get to it here in a moment. This is contextual in nature, so check it out. Uh, one person responded in our Facebook post here, one person responded with her perspective on it, and I wanted to, to muscle test that as well, which she responded yes to the person who wrote it. Yes, people can drain your energy if you let them, and that tests weak. The peop but then she followed up. The people aren't, oh no, this is what I said, sorry. <laughs> this is what I said. People aren't draining your energy. You have a reaction to their survival consciousness and your reaction is draining your energy that tests strong. So people aren't draining your energy that tests strong. You, you are having a reaction to their survival consciousness that tests strong. And someone like you will have a reaction to other people's survival consciousness because you are a thriving part of humanity. So I just want you to keep that in mind, okay? Then the next thing is, well, how do we, how do we, um, uh, how do we make sure that we don't get drained? And I wrote down total and complete acceptance allows us to be in the presence of people who have survival consciousness and not be drained, that test strong. So practicing total and complete acceptance of those people is the key. So trying to do some magical voodoo, woo-woo energy blah, 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 thing to them, uh, that's protectionism. Protectionism 
uh, it implies that all is not well. Protectionism implies that we are separate. Protectionism implies that you're limited and that you need to protect yourself, otherwise somehow you're gonna be harmed. And all of those things go weak and make you weak and then they make your mind talk and then you are agitated and then you blame other people. So it's like you hold a context that you have to protect yourself around certain people. Then your system goes crazy, drains your energy, right? Your energy goes away because you're, you're thinking things that are weakening you. And so weakening things make your energy go away. And then simultaneously you get grumpy, your mind starts chatting, and then rather than owning it, you blame them. And that, my friend, will keep you from being in an enlightened state. It's always you. It's never them. It's always you. It's never them. Let's look at more, okay? Hold on. Looking at more, here we go. Um, these people are referred to as energy vampires. And so I just tested. Energy vampires exist, strong, but only in a certain context. Can we or should we protect our energy? That's weakening. That weakens you to protect your energy because one, uh, if you are protecting yourself, you're, in, you're engaging what it is that you're talking about or what you're protecting against, you're taking it on. Another thing is that presupposes that there's a finite amount of energy. It, uh, it's a lack-based mindset. It's also a dualistic mindset. It, it, is, it assumes that they're over there and you're over here and you need to maintain your um, space and your division. And while there is merit to that idea, in the end, we are all one thing expressing itself with infinite variety. That enlightenment is the recognition that the source of life for you is the source of life for everyone and everything. They're you and you are them. You're only experiencing you. You're not experiencing them. You're experiencing your interpretation of them. So I wrote down, practice non-resistance. That test wrong. Practice non-resistance. Does this negative energy need to be cleansed is another question, and that is weak. And I'm going to tell you what, um, what we do in the rapid enlightenment process to restore our energy. So this is what tests strong. Restore wholeness and integrity in your soul through all time. Restore wholeness and integrity in your soul through all time. So one of the ways you can do that is by setting the intention for enlightened consciousness. Um, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of videos that you can refer to on, on uh, YouTube as you know, meditation for enlightened consciousness, setting an intention for enlightened consciousness. Um, when I first started doing the daily enlightenment, I put it at the beginning of every single uh, um, daily enlightenment, but here it is, please, and I'll put it in the uh, notes below. Please set the intention for enlightened consciousness to flow through, to experience purity of my own consciousness, to know that all is well, to practice total and complete acceptance of all people in all situations at all times, including myself. Something like that, okay? So that will actually, uh, let's say you go, it, go to an, a, a party, you meet someone, and there is that, uh, bleh, that you feel it, right? But what you're feeling is your context, you're feeling the way you're relating to them. So what there is to do is to use the intention to restore yourself back into an intention for enlightened consciousness. Enlightened consciousness is the framework that all is well. Isn't that cool? Uh, so now we're going to switch. And the next set that people uh, talked about was, do people carry a color of, uh, color of energy in their aura? And it tests strong, and I have no idea what that means because I don't see anything like that. So I have no idea if that's true, but some people do see it. Some people, maybe, maybe you do. Some people can see the changes and shifts in, in the color of people, uh, of their aura, which is, uh, think of your aura as an electromagnetic field surrounding you, similar to gravity kind of thing. It's the thing, it's really the thing that's holding you together. Okay, then uh, the next one is, does the aura change depending on mood or level of enlightenment? That also tests strong. Now, we have been able to, uh, in our work and in our research around the um, rapid enlightenment process, we have been able to discern that as your consciousness goes up, and we use Dr. Hawkins' scale of consciousness to measure consciousness going up, uh, as your consciousness goes up, your aura expands. So this is a, it's a, it's, it's a double-edged sword because as your aura expands, uh, meaning uh, the energy, as the energy that is you or that you can perceive expands into the world, you bump into a lot more stuff. 
and it's a little more disconcerting because you feel things even more deeply. And if you don't, in my view, okay, and this is just in my view, this is not truth, okay? But if you don't have muscle testing to be able to discern what it is that you're speaking, then you have to use your mind. Your mind will 1000% get distorted. If you're using your intuition, your intuition will be blinded by things like karma, intentions, vows, purposes from, from previous versions of yourself that are coming in. So um, using muscle testing to me is, has been a huge game changer because as I feel stuff, I'm like, Ugh, what is that? Next one, do people exchange energy? And that tests strong. They exchange energy. So energy goes from me to you to me to you. Uh, then the next one after that is uh, what about Eckhart Tolle's description of the pain body? So first of all, we test the pain body. That tests strong as, a, as an idea, as a concept. So thinking in terms of the pain body strengthens you. But I never, I could never figure it out, but recently I have figured out for in my own language what the pain body is. And the pain body is Eckert's label for survival consciousness. That tests strong. Now that makes complete sense to me because survival consciousness for someone like you, someone like me, I mean, if we're into Eckert's message, right? So um, we're into Eckert's message because we're predisposed to an enlightened state. You may not be fully there yet. You may still be working on it, blah, 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 right? Whatever but you're predisposed to it. That's why you're watching or listening to this. So those people who tune into Eckhart's message, when they interface with their own survival consciousness or survival consciousness just at large from the species standpoint, it's, it's, it is painful. Okay, then she says, I know that I personally feel something that I have called, quote, the energy or vibe of a person or even a room or a place, and that there is some, there are some who seem to drain my energy if I allow it. All of that tested weak, except for if I allow it. So the whole thing, it really comes down to your context. It's yes, for sure you're feeling it. 100% you're feeling it. But it's you, it's not them. It's always you. It's always your context and what you're holding on to. And then she says, and I know other people can sense my energy as well and are either attracted or put off that also test strong. There's a lot of us that are very sensitive. So my question to you is, um, what about energy for you? Like what insight are you having about your energy and other people's energy and how you maintain your homeostasis, your balance in the world? Will you leave me a comment below, please? Leave me a comment. You watch this thing all the way through. I wanna, I wanna commune with you. I wanna communicate with you. Will you leave me a comment? My name is Matthew Ferry. I am the author of Quiet Mind Epic Life. And here's what I'd like you to do. Like this video, like this audio. With these big platforms that we're distributing on, likes are the currency. So you watch it all the way through. Like it, that tells these platforms, hey, this is good stuff. And clearly you think it's good. You watch the whole damn thing, okay? Uh, second thing is share this with people in your tribe who you think it'll make a difference for and leave me a comment. Those three things make a huge difference in getting this message out there in the world and I would love your help in that. Also consider subscribing. When you do that, I make a video every single day or an audio, whatever you're, whatever you're uh, listening or, or watching on. And then the last thing is consider joining us in the Spiritual Hooligans Facebook group. That's where all these questions came from. So we're all like chatting, rapping, um, you know, giving our two cents on things. And there are some unbelievably powerful, smart, amazing, intuitive, killer people in there. Amazing. Come join us. I'll put the link down below. We'd love to have you there. Thank you so much for tuning in to this daily enlightenment.